Hi there. Welcome to Furniture Restoration Part 5 with your host, Mr. Flegg. We have all of our stuff that we're working on today is nice and primed with our first coat of primer. I don't think I'll need two. We have this here and the other door is over there waiting to be painted. So I'm going to show you how we're going to apply this paint to this big surface right here, which is nice and easy to see. Adjust it to you. So I went and I bought a paint to the color that was requested of me by my customer. And we're going to take a look at how it looks. Something you definitely want to invest in is a good paint can opener. Over the years, I've used bits of wood, butter knives, and all sorts of goofy things like that. And it's never as good as a good paint can opener. So we have, I believe it's called Very Navy, I think is the color I went with. Yeah, Very Navy. So that's going to be a nice blue color that's going to be all around the outside of this. Now, if you buy your paint from the store, you don't have to give it a stir because they shake it for you. However, because I'm me, I always give it an extra little stir just to be on the safe side. Now, I've purchased a paint that is semi-gloss. Semi-gloss is ah, it's kind of the best of both worlds. A little eggshell, a little satin, a little glossy. So the end result will have, as opposed to the trendy matte finish, that I find doesn't wear very easily over time. It'll have a little bit of gloss, a little bit of strength, and be able to stand up to a little bit of abuse. What we're gonna do is first I'm going to, on the insides of this, I'm gonna take my small brush, my two inch brush, and I'm gonna do all the little detail parts. And then I'm gonna take my nice big three inch brush, and I'm gonna paint everywhere else. You want to make sure that you start and finish one section at a time. You don't want to have your paint halfway down and then you take a coffee break for an hour and come back and there's a weird line right here. Hopefully I can get away with only two coats, but we'll see. I bought enough paint to paint a small bedroom and that should be more than enough to cover this here. So taking my time. Yeah, this color is going to be really nice. Making sure to get into all the corners. You'll notice that I don't have a fancy brush that I'm doing with this. And that's okay. If you do a several coats and you take your time, you don't need to buy a $20 or $30 brush. I think I bought a 12 pack of these for about 4 or $5. So I'm just going to do this little section with both brushes. And then I'll... Carry on. So, I've done the corners. That's looking nice. I'm going to set this aside. I'm wearing gloves. Don't need to because paint is water soluble. But, I don't know. I just don't like paint on my hands. Okay. Notice that I'm not taking an obscene amount of paint on the brush at one time. Just enough to do a little section. And then go back for a little bit more. Now this applies to every type of painting, whether it be a piece of furniture or you're painting a wall in your house. Just a little bit of paint. Apply it. Nice even strokes. And then we're good. Okay. I will work on this and I'll get back to you. As I'm painting here, I'm noticing that the white from the primer is coming through the blue that I'm painting on, just in little streaks. And I want you to avoid, when you're doing this, I want you to avoid the urge to slop on more paint to try to cover that up. It's much better to do several light passes with paint, as a, or several light coats rather, as opposed to one big glob of paint. It's much better to go nice and light and just do a several, several coats. All right? Again, up and down nicely. 
just like that. And I can see there is a little bit of white coming through from the primer, and that's all right. I'm going to catch it with the second coat. Okay, I finished painting one of my faces or the side here of my cabinet. And what I'm going to do before I move on to the other parts is I'm going to take a look. I'm going to look around and I'm going to see if I've missed anything, especially I'm looking for drips. Drips are going to be a pain in the butt later on in the process. So you want to be fussy now so it's easier later. So I'm taking a look, making sure I didn't catch any, I didn't miss any drips. And if I'm happy, which I am, and take my project, and you can just move around your project, but so you can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna move the project for you. And I'm gonna continue on with this here. I'm only gonna paint the sections that I primed. I think that this navy is gonna work well with the dark color on the inside, so I'm not gonna worry about Painting the inside of this again, nice, light, easy strokes. Not being concerned about the white that's coming through. Just trying to get a nice, even coat here. Okay, second side done. Front side's done. Now I gotta do the top. Now something that uh, I had to do for my project, so you guys can see it, and also because I don't like crouching over and my knees are old, is I put this onto this table here. I had help lifting it. It was fairly heavy, but the flip side of that is to paint the top of this project, which is invariably what people are going to see the most. I have to get up onto the table and paint it from the top side. I wouldn't recommend doing this, but uh, it's what worked for me in this situation. I always remember to work. Here we are, the main cabinet is all done. And moving on to the doors and the drawers. Again, while we're doing this, we wanna make sure that we're really, really fussy with this. Not worrying about paint on the glass, we can just take a razor and scrape that off after. And we're trying to get as nice a product as we can. The biggest problem with little things like this is your brush strokes can kind of end up crazy and all over the place. You want to try really, really hard to have nice, even brush strokes along your project instead of just kind of dabbing on like that wherever you can. That's something that you'll notice forever as poor craftsmanship, and we don't want that. So here I am. Again, I'm going to start on the inside. Yeah. Paint all the complicated parts first with my smaller brush. And once the smaller brush stuff is good, take my big brush and get all the larger areas here, just like this. There we go. So we're working on this now. Finishing up the paint on the second door now. That's looking super sharp. I'm going to carefully grab it. And I'm going to move it over to my drying station. My drying station is over there. What I'm gonna do, now that they're both set up and drying, take a look for any drips that might have, I might have missed. Let's see if there's any spots that I missed. This is all looking really good. So next, I'm going to paint the drawer front. And then after I paint the drawer front, we'll be able to let this dry for, I don't know, about four or five hours. All right, the doors, drawers are done. 
That looks pretty good. I'm going to let this dry. Oh, just hanging off the edge of the table is fine since I'm all done painting. A couple things I want you to think about is once you're done painting, right away, you want to make sure that you are cleaning your brushes. Really, really good. Water soluble, so just wash them in the sink, your laundry sink, or your kitchen sink if you're very careful and you remember to wash the sink after so you don't make your parents upset. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to follow the directions on the can of paint that say let it dry for about four hours because there's a difference between dry and set. When something is dry, it might be dry to the touch, but it still isn't ready to be recoated. So follow the directions on the can very, very well. If you're feeling cheeky, you can turn on the heat or put a space heater in the room that you're in. And sometimes that increases the time, the dry time, but I wouldn't play around with that much, too much until you have a little bit more experience if this is your first go at it. So I'm going to leave this for four hours and we're going to come back to it a little bit later on. That's... Furniture restoration, part five, looking good.